Hey, what's up, everybody? Jay the Stingray back here again with another WTF review. This is going to be RoboCop 3. And uh, this is a distinction to me personally being the first RoboCop film I was able to watch in the theater. So kind of interesting going to, going back and watching this one again. I don't think I've seen it since then. So going back watching it and uh, realizing how, you know exactly how bad it is, this... Uh, Widely known for being a really bad movie, and uh, it's also widely known for pretty much killing the career of Fred Decker, a uh, you know horror writer director that I enjoyed a lot of his stuff. Um, Monster Squad, Night of the Creeps, and then this film was his third film to direct, and he hasn't really done a whole lot since. Um, so unfortunately, this film pretty much killed his career. Uh, but, you know, this was during a period of time when Orion was going through bankruptcy. And, you know, from the very start of this film, you realize it's a very, very low budget. So, um, you know, I, that's probably majority to blame why this film is so bad. Because uh, it's written by uh, Frank Miller and uh, Fred Decker. And this is based on, I think, one of Frank Miller's uh, cyborg samurai uh, graphic novel. Something like that. And uh, it stars, uh, uh, let's see, Rip Torn, uh, CCH Pounder, Stephen Root, Jeff Garland has a small role in there. So it's got a good bit of, you know, people that know what they're doing, you know, talented actors that have done tons of things before. I don't really think it's any of their fault is why this film is so bad. But it's got a few strikes against it. Um, the main one being that Peter Weller didn't return to reprise his role as RoboCop. It's actually played by, RoboCop is played by Robert John Burke, who does an okay job, I think. He looks similar to Peter, Peter Weller, so when he's in the suit, it's not that noticeable. But this film was also rated PG-13, and I think that's the major nail in the coffin. It's, uh, it, it lacks any of the, you know, the, um, you know, the graphic violence that I think made the first film and the second film to, you know, some degree, it made them what they are, it made them so great. You know, I've got so many images burning in my brain of the first film, you know, the first time I watched it, and, uh, you know, this film doesn't have any of that. It's all, uh, it's all lots of cutaways, so I don't know if they intended on this being PG-13 to begin with, but probably so. Just to cash in on you know more of those ticket sales, and it worked on me. You know I paid for a ticket, me and uh, I think one of my buddies. We went and saw it and uh, weren't that impressed, even as, as uh, you know younger folks. But um, there was a uh, RoboCop 2 video game. On the back it said, uh, "Coming in 1992, RoboCop 3 for all ages." So. That tells you right there that, that maybe they did intend on it actually being PG-13 early on in the process, but who knows? It, you know, because Orion was going through bankruptcy, it sat on the shelf for you know a year or so, so they may have recut it during that period of time. Um, because there are lots of odd cutaways in the film that you know there probably was more gore, more violence there. But um, yeah, the the suit, you know. First of all, the suit is uh, its the same suit they used in Part 2. I don't know what's up with it, but it looks a lot cheaper to me. You could tell that it's like plastic and vinyl and stuff and not, you know, at all metal like it's supposed to look. Um, very cheap looking suit. I don't know if it's just that it's stretched out because the guy who's playing RoboCop is just a hair taller. But uh, when, he, when, he, when he turns his body, you can see like the folds in the, you know, in the rubber suit. It looks really bad. Um... But yeah, from the very start of the film, you realize it's just got a really cheap look to it. Um, a lot of the same stop motion used with the with the Ed 209 at the very beginning, and the uh, the character uh, Nico, she's a, a young young lady whose um, family got got taken away by by OCP. She uh, apparently is like a computer hacker, and she's got like a weird, like old computer that she's able to just plug into stuff and do stuff. But anyway, at the beginning of the film, she plugs into this, uh, you know, Ed 209 that uh, looks really similar to the way they shot it in the first film. But you know, this was a standard depth transfer that I watched, so it, it didn't look nearly as good as what I'm used to the new RoboCop, uh, you know, uh, transfer that looks really good, by the way. But she plugs into this thing and, you know, basically turns it into a dog, makes it do, like, tricks like a dog. Really weird. 
but she uses that throughout the film. It's it's really stupid because her uh, it's a lot of that stuff in the eighties and early nineties. You know when it shows computer and it shows a computer and they're just like you know the technology. They had no idea what it was going to actually be, so it's just really really odd to see. Um, but uh, yeah, the film has got gutter punks everywhere. These like weird. Uh, uh, street trashy, you know, punks with weird mohawks and chains everywhere, which seemed really common in films around that period of time. I don't know if that's what they thought the future was going to be or what, but everyone's got a mohawk, and uh, it, it's you know even the uh, the the set design and the you know the the costumes on those folks look really cheap. But there's a part in the film when they actually. The, the cops leave and then OCP recruits a lot of these uh, street punks to become, you know, their new uh, their new enforcers. And there there's this one scene of this guy, he's trying to get the helmet on, but his, like, spiky mohawk is so tall and he's just, like, trying to shove it on. I don't know if it was something, like, he chose to do himself, but it's supposed to be kind of kind of comedic, but it really came off as stupid to me. Um the uh, bad guy in this film actually is a cyber ninja, and you find out that there's more than one of him. And there's some. This guy makes some crazy faces, like the whole time he's just like, Arr! like when he gets his, like this one time Robocop punches him, I think, and he uh, he like knocks his jaw out of place. It's pretty funny, um, but yeah, you know I enjoyed that that part of the film. I don't think that was really the problem. Um, you know, I just tried to do too much with too low of a budget, and it didn't work out. Uh, I don't think this film's quite as bad as, you know, what some of the other ratings I've seen, you know, what, what Rotten Tomatoes says right now. But, um, yeah, definitely, uh, definitely not a very good film. Oh, this, uh, it also stars, um, let's see, what's her name? Uh, Nancy Allen from the first, you know, the first two films. She, you know, she was the main, the main role in, the, uh, First film, I know I haven't seen the second film in a while, so it's hard for me to remember. Um, but she was in this film, and this is a little bit of a spoiler if you haven't seen it, but I'm sure you probably wouldn't watch this video if you haven't seen the film. Um, I wouldn't recommend watching it anyway. But she would only sign on to do this film if her character was killed off in the first half of the film, and that's what happens. A really, really bizarre way that they did that. It uh, just, just really, like like uh you know not uh climatic at all the way they did it uh but that's pretty much it it's uh just a you know swing and a miss and uh you know I blame the majority of that on the low budget and probably the studio probably uh did a did a horrible job editing the film but um there's one scene where uh, where RoboCop like he uh steals his pimp's car and apparently, even in the future, pimps are driving pink Cadillacs because there's a shot with uh, there. It's a, it's a whole scene with RoboCop driving a pink Cadillac, and uh, pretty much sums up the uh, the whole you know feeling in the movie right there. It's just a it's a joke, but uh, yeah, you know, check it out if you dig RoboCop, and let me know what you think. If you guys have seen it, let me know what you think because uh, I'm kind of on the fence. I, I, I liked it probably more than I should have because of RoboCop, but once I got past the, you know, horrible look of the film and, uh, you know, saw some of my 